Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm doing a really chill casual book haul of the books that I picked up for uh, February and March I think. Um, I'm very bad at keeping track. Anything that I've already read will not be featured on here because they just go into my wrap ups. So and some of these are books that are on my April TBR so you will have heard me talk about them briefly already. So the first thing that I did was I bought some of the Penguin English Library Japanese paperback classics. So two of them were to replace books that I already had on my shelf where I didn't like the covers. One of those is The Sailor Who Fell From, uh, from Grace With The Sea by uh, Yoko Mishima. This is about three boys who to begin with are completely enamoured with one of their mother's new boyfriends um, but then after spending a little bit of time with him they turn against him I believe. Should be quite interesting. Then I also have Out by Kirano. For some reason they're not putting the people's first names on here and I haven't looked this up. I'm very sorry. Um, this is a Japanese thriller I believe and is kind of very iconic and classic and I've read another one from this author called Grotesque that I really enjoyed when I was a teenager. So I don't know too many of the details. I think it is focused on like women and violence between women rather than against women but I'm not 100% certain. And then I have The Housekeeper and the Professor by Ogawa. This um, I can't remember. Um, I think it's somebody who has really short term memory loss. I'm not too sure, um, but looks pretty. So that was kind of my logic for those. Then on the note of Yoko Ogawa, uh, my sister bought me The Memory Police. And this is, uh, she bought this for me for my birthday. And this is about a world where um, people's memories can be partially removed, I think or if it's something disappears then it no longer has meaning something to do with the memory police we've kind of got like a 1984 the thought police kind of vibe going on here i know it's a bit kind of dystopian-esque i'm not again 100 certain but i'm really excited to try and get to this one fairly soon literally this morning that came in the post from uh category is books which is the queer book subscription service that i have is uh james baldwin's another country this is about a jazz musician in harlem called rufus and he I think he is adrift and he's kind of self destructive and it's sort of his experiences going through the Harlem scene. I've read Giovanni's Room by, Dave, uh, by James Baldwin before and absolutely adored it so I'm really excited for this one and Baldwin is on my classics authors kind of TBR list but I didn't specify which one I just told categories books like grab me a Baldwin that you enjoy and I'm here for it so I'll love to see um, what he does with this particular story. On the note of category is books who I will link down below they're a really amazing bookstore in um, Scotland but they ship everywhere in the UK Okay, so please do check them out. A couple of things that I got from them uh, very recently was Camilla uh, by Joseph Sheridan Le Fanu. This is one of the earliest um, examples of vampire fiction. I think it predates Dracula and it's actually about a lesbian vampire which can be very exciting. It had a like um, internet only TV series made about it a couple of years ago that Tumblr loved so I kind of know vague bits because of that but I'm really intrigued and I told them to get me the one with the prettiest cover and I love all these different like funky bat creatures on it and it's got illustrations through it I'll see if I can find one so I think that this is going to be a really stunning edition of this book then I also have The Root of Ice and Salt by Jose Luis Zarate. Um, this was actually um, Sylvia Morena Garcia who's an amazing Mexican author was really um, like going on about this on her Twitter. This is a retelling of Dracula but it's focused specifically on the sailors on the ship when Dracula comes from Transylvania to the UK and um, kind of he slowly picks them off one by one and it's about like the captain's experiences and it's finally been translated into English so um, I thought I would grab a copy. It looks really interesting. I love that I've got like two vampire things to go for um, so that's gonna be really good fun. Sticking with classics I also bought this monster edition of HG Wells. Um, this is seven different books of which I have actually read five of them but I'm finding it difficult to find copies of HG Wells other books that I haven't read yet that I actually like the covers of so I've got When the Sleeper Wakes and The World Set Free in here I know nothing about them but I love HG Wells writing I've enjoyed all five books of his I've read which is War of the Worlds, The Island of Dr. Moreau, The Invisible Man, The Time Machine and The First Men in the Moon and they're all fantastic he's such an iconic sci-fi writer so yeah I'm really intrigued to see when I'm going to get to this one um not one to read on public transport definitely not one to put in your handbag a bit beefy on the note of another beefy book i have the blood bowl omnibus by matt forbeck blood bowl is this is four books in one 
Blood Bowl is actually what was originally maybe a board game and then a video game. It's part of the Warhammer world, uh, which is something that I know very little about, but Andy used to be very big into Warhammer in his teenage years. And we might be starting to paint minis together soon, which would be really fun. I actually read this as a teenager because a bunch of my mates were quite into Warhammer. This book is basically American football meets like Lord of the Rings. It's got orcs and goblins and all sorts of crazy things. There's like a weird tree creature. And it's about... Um, uh, I think he's an ogre, it's an, uh, kind of an ogre who comes from a disgraced family who's trying to make his fortune in the Blood Bowl world. Um, I read the first three books when I was a teenager, my mate had copies of them, but basically they've been out of print for absolutely forever, cost a fortune to get. I found a copy of one in the library years ago, so I reread it then. Deeply enjoyable books, so entertaining, but they've finally been reprinted in this massive bind of omnibus, and I never actually read book four, so I'm really psyched to jump back in with book two, check out the world, and just sort of have fun with this ridiculous, highly entertaining fantasy series. Talking more prep for Springathon that should be coming up soon, hopefully the announcement video is already out, so I'll link it down below. That's where we read books that are focused on nature, specifically nature non-fiction, um, although fiction is included, and one that I'm going to be hopefully reading for fiction is Warship down by Richard Adams. This again is a classic and it is the tale of a collection of rabbits who have to go and leave their warren and find a new home because um, there's going to be something bad happening to their warren I think, maybe a development. Um, it's probably an allegory for something but I just want to sit and read about rabbits and it has an animated um, children's movie that traumatizes you. Um, <laughs> some really horrible scenes in it that I do want to re-watch because I don't think I ever watched it all the way through and I can just see snippets of the horrible scenes. So I think this can be really good to read as a bunny lover. Um, I've also bought, I'm not going to probably get to it in Springathon but that's totally okay, is uh, The Triumph of Seeds by Thor Hansen. How grains, nuts, kernels, pulses and pips conquered the plant kingdom and shaped human history. The development of seeds is super important in like the history of both plants and also um, of our kind of um, world in general and it's something that I've read snippets of in other um, books about paleontology so I'm really really interested to read this one. Thor Hansen is kind of a big name in nature writing he's got a couple other books of which I can't remember I think one called Buzz that's about bees maybe that's quite popular so um, I'd like to kind of take on the sort of giant of nature writing as well I think it'd be interesting to see what his writing is like and I've been really getting into more reading about plants plants are going to feature quite heavily on my Springathon TBR so um, yeah I'm intrigued to get to this one eventually but it won't be this round. Now swapping over to books that I bought in ebook or audiobook form, I also have The Space Between Worlds by Micaiah Johnson. This is on my April TBR and it is a sci-fi, I think novella, and it's about um, kind of a multiverse idea where if you're killed you can go to a different multiverse um, only if your iteration of yourself in that world has been killed off already and I think it's about a secret agent who uses this to kind of do some kind of spy work and not 100% certain. I also picked up The Relentless Moon by uh, Mary Robinette Cowell. This is kind of cosy sci-fi and it's about the space race but it's about the space race being motivated due to an asteroid strike essentially wipe out life on Earth. It's book three so I don't want to go into too much detail here but I'm really excited to jump back in. Um, I also picked up Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake. This is one that, again, I'm hoping to get to in Springathon. I've got the audiobook of it, and it's basically just about fungi and their role within kind of our ecosystem. Um, fungi is one of the few areas of nature writing that I feel like I haven't really tapped into, and it's, so it's something that I'd like to focus on a bit more in Springathon. I also have a copy on the way, but it hasn't arrived yet, of The Way Through the Woods by Long Lit Woon. This is also about mushrooms, but it's more of a memoir, and it's about a woman who uses, um, I think it's the death of her husband and then she goes and learns about mushroom foraging almost as like as a way of coping with her grief. Both of these books are actually the book club picks for May for the Book Naturalist book club which I will link down below and the two lovely women who host that are actually also co-hosts for Springathon so I'll leave all their details down below as well so that will be fun to join in with. Um, I have mixed responses to memoirs we'll see how this goes. More generally I've also picked up Dead Famous by Greg Jenner. Greg Jenner is a writer for The Horrible Histories he also um, has an amazing podcast called You're Dead to Me um, which is basically just a history podcast. His book is about the history of celebrity and when it kind of came into being um, sort of society's fascination with the celebrity and I'm so excited to try and get to it at some point. It might be a history challenge pick, really intrigued by that. I also picked up something to talk about by M Meryl Wilsner, I think. I now can't read my own handwriting. Um, this is a fun rom-com um, kind of contemporary romance and I believe it's a lesbian couple and it's a fake dating trope and I think it's something to do with one of them again being sort of a celebrity and the paparazzi getting involved but I do love a good fake dating trope when it's done well. Some of my favourite um, 
like contemporary romance as a fake dating trope so I'm intrigued and then I think the final book I think is Slay by Brittany Morris this is a YA book and it's about a um teenager who has kind of uh, coded and created this video game world which is kind of like an RPG um, but it's specifically for the black community and then I think it gets taken over um, and then sort of her identity comes out about it. I'm not 100% certain the exact like plot but I know RPGs feature really heavily and as somebody who plays WoW Classic like every week and loves it um, I'm really excited to read this. I've heard really good things from sort of the YA side of booktube about it so um, yeah it's the only YA on this list because you know I don't read much of it but I think it'll be really interesting. So I think that's all of the uh, new books on my shelves that I haven't read yet at this current moment in time. Um, so yeah, just let me know where you think I should start. Obviously some of them are on my April TBR already. Some of them also will be happening in May. So intriguing. Some of them will probably sit and languish for a very long time, but that's how book hauls go, isn't it? So um, yeah, have you read any of these? Tell me your thoughts, everything. And let's bring back the random question. That was fun. Uh, random question time. What are you having for lunch today? And also, what was your first pet that you ever had if you had a pet? And if you don't have a pet, what would you like? I think I often ask about food and animals. It's very focused. That's kind of my jam. Anyway, I'm going to go. Have a wonderful reading week. I'll chat to you soon. Bye.